Okay, good morning. Yeah, can you see the slide? Good morning, sir. Morning. Yes, we can see slide. Okay. Okay, so today we will have a one hour class. Okay, so this is more on the discussion, it's not on the lecture. Uh, okay, I think last week I gave uh, two videos. Okay, one video on last week's lecture, uh, one more video uh, on the continuation of chapter one. Okay, so I ask you all to watch the video uh, because last week uh, for the first lecture on Thursday, on Thursday, Kamis uh, Pagi, uh, so we saw uh, was almost two hours. Uh, we have gone through until like, 26. Okay, so the continuation I give you on video. Okay, start from this slide. Okay, so page number 26. Okay, up to 63. Okay, so it will cover all the other uh, important aspect of chapter 1. Okay, so today I hope you all already watched the video. It's about 34 minutes of video. I think the video is very important. So, kalau belum atengo, so I hope you think about it personally. Okay, so I, I I I let you watch at your own time. Okay, because some, uh, they prefer to watch after the discussion, uh, some before the discussion. So I always prefer you to watch before the discussion. In the discussion, uh, there can be two-way communication. So instead of me just giving a lecture, uh, so I hope you also then so I can explain based on the slide. Okay, for today. Uh, I will just go through the slides quickly. Uh, so, apa yang I rasa important, I will just uh, give to you. Okay, then I will open for Q&A. Okay, so if you have question, you can immediately ask. I will give you answer. Okay. So, uh, so this is the sli uh, starting slide for the asynchronous lecture video. Okay, so basic component of a pneumatic system. Okay, so dalam pneumatic system, so we have, uh, okay, wait. Okay. okay, dalam pneumatic system, so you have a few basic components, so which you cannot, uh, you cannot like escape lah. Uh, maybe you can skip uh, one or two not important component, but generally all these component can add. Okay, so they start the air compressor. Okay, air compressor, if you want to compress the air and straight away channel to your system. Uh, so, kadang-kadang, kita simpan uh, air yang compress inside the tank. Okay, then you can just use the tank lah. Okay, but the air must be compressed first because air without compression, it cannot give power. Uh, so, you probably uh, start your pneumatic system lah. If the air is not compressed because not enough pressure. Okay, then you have air receiver. So I think it's upper function air receiver. Then dryer. So I think from the name you know lah. So it to dry the compressed air. So maybe the compressed air has some water vapor. And you can dry dulu. Kalau tak, the system akan berkarat. Okay, then you have a service unit. Service unit. Uh, normally you have a filter. Uh, FRL, filter, regulation and lubrication. Kita akan tengok juga. Uh, so, dia ada function-function dia. So, after you prepare, so this this thing, we call it as uh, uh, air supply and conditioning element. So, kalau you tengok dalam kota ni. So, kota ni. Basically, to prepare the air before channel to your system. Uh, so, apa-apa yang you diperlukan kadang-kadang, so the Air already dry enough, so you tak perlu kan dryer. So it depends on your system. Okay, then once you finish this, then baru you channel to your control valve, uh, then your actuators. So actuators penting lah. Sebab tak ada actuator, no use. But kita nak gunakan pneumatic system to do work. Uh, so normally actuator akan ada lah at the end. Okay, so this is the basic component of pneumatic system. Yeah. Okay, so kita akan tengok one by one. So, what, what are the uh, functions? Okay, so kita start dengan A. A is air compressor. Tadi kita tengok. So, based on it, yeah, air compressor. Okay, so air compressor, apa yang important dekat slide ni? 
okay so uh, air compressor converts the mechanical energy to an electrical or combustion motor into the potential energy of compressor so apa apa yang mechanism yang ada dalam air compressor it will convert the mechanical energy into a potential energy so untuk disimpan lah uh, so when you compress the air it will create a pressure uh, so that's the function of air compressor so generation of compressor air so the compressed air must be generated okay um, so yang ni adalah dia punya mechanism positive displacement okay so, so uh, most of the available air compressor are positive displacement meaning you generate dulu then baru dia start so intake air is compressed into decreasing volume ah uh, maksudnya the volume dia akan kurang Uh, so uh, angin masuk, uh, volume makan kurang, dia akan jadi kompres. Uh, so that's a positive displacement lah. Okay. The pressure in the receiver is generally higher than the required of, at the operating position with local pressure regulation being used. Okay. So uh, meaning dalam ni dia akan jadi higher pressure lah. Sebab dia dari upstream ke downstream. So here will be higher. Uh, in your application area, it will be lower, so the air will move from your compressor to your application area. Okay, so this on the air compressor. So, boleh tengok dekat sini some of uh, the type lah. So, most, uh, mostly we will use a positive displacement type. So, ada reciprocating type and rotary. Rotary berputar. Okay, so reciprocating meaning is a linear movement. Okay, so, ada few lah. So, dalam lecture note ni, kita akan discuss few. Okay, so most on in the industries, you ada piston type of compressor. So, meaning reciprocating or linear type. Okay, then you ada lah uh, some other application macam dynamic displacement type, uh, centrifugal compressor, axial flow compressors. So, kita tengok sedikit. Uh, so, this the basic lah. So, piston type compressor. Okay, so how the piston type compressor work? Okay, ada satu stage. Single stage. Meaning, air masuk, dia compress, dia keluar. So, that means single stage. Uh, so, boleh tengok dekat sini. So, you have an inlet and you have an outlet. Uh, dalam ni, dia compression berlaku lah because of the uh, movement of the piston. Okay, so, the air is entering from the atmosphere. So, enter here. So, the uh, valve ni buka. So, air masuk. Uh, then, uh, dia pergi ke atas, dia akan tutup balik. Okay, then the compression happen uh, based on the piston. Uh, once it compress, it will be sent to the outlet. So, that we call it stage compressor. Okay, so what's uh, important here, you boleh baca tengok. I think uh, dalam video pun, I dah explain dah. So, you, kalau you nak more explanation, you tengok video. Okay, so the important uh, element, yes. A single stage compressors, lalunya will generate uh, a compressor of 3 to 7 bar. Uh, ya, ni macam hari tu lah, pneumatic system, it always uh, use uh, less than 10 bar. Uh, so, it's because it's using a single stage compressor. So it will generate a pressure 3 to 7 bar range. So it is on the piston type. Uh, then, kita ada juga piston type compressor. So, favorite question dalam exam. Okay, piston type compressor. Tadi single stage. So, this is multi-stage compressor. Okay, multi-stage meaning you ada more than two. Uh, two stage. Tadi single stage, dia masuk, dia compress, dia keluar. So, yang ni tengok. So, you have air inlet, it enters. Okay, first compression is happening here. Then the air enters here. You have an intercooler. So, function of intercooler, I explain nanti. Uh, then, one, it enters the second stage. It masuk balik. Then, it compress again and goes out. Okay, so it's driven by the same motor. Uh, so, dekat sini low pressure. Dekat sini high pressure. Okay, so the... The advantage of multi-stage compressor, uh, tadi tengok. So, you ada four stage. One, two, three and four. Uh, so, kita panggil as four stage lah. Okay. So, dekat sini, you boleh tengok. 
compare to the previous one 3 to 7 bar yani multi stage compressor dia boleh create up to 250 bar almost uh, almost macam hydraulic uh, so if your application requires uh, higher pressure operation uh, ataupun compress air uh, of uh, more than 200 uh, then you can consider having multi stage compressor uh, tapi when you have more uh, setup uh, so they involve cost lah uh, so you kena tengok juga on the cost side okay, so uh, lagi satu ah uh, tengah-tengah ni ada intercooler okay, in between uh, both uh, pistons you have an intercooler so the function of intercooler so kalau you tengok dekat sini so the air is entering is compressed and goes out so at this part the air will be high pressure, uh, not high, like medium pressure and uh, having temperature. Okay, so ada, ada temperature lah. Because when the pressure increase, so the temperature can tend to increase. Uh, lalu ke intercooler ni, the tem temperature will drop. Uh, so intercooler ni dalam dalam intercooler, you have uh, some cooling, cooling element or it can be a mechanical uh, way. Or it can be some chemical. Uh, so dalam ni ada. So what it will do. So dekat sini. Uh, medium pressure. Medium te temperature again. Uh, so once it pass the intercooler. It will become medium pressure. Uh, low temperature. Uh, so that's the function of intercooler. So reduce the uh, temperature. So then you must go here. So it will. Uh, generate higher pressure. That is medium. That is high pressure dekat sini. The final stage before it enters to your application. So, it intercooler helps to reduce the temperature. So, reduce the temperature of compressor during the compression state. Okay. So, that's on the uh, piston type. Uh, so, boleh tengok dekat sini how it works. So, it connected to the same motor, crankshaft. So the air enters from the atmosphere. Okay, so first compression is happening. Uh, then it enters to the second part before it pass the intercooler. Uh, so think of the Cassini Mera. Okay, we are showing that the air is uh, out. Then uh, once it pass through the intercooler, so the temperature is dropped, then it compresses again. So that's how it can uh, generate higher compression, uh, higher pressure, but uh, reasonable temperature. Okay. Okay, so this is the working principle of multi-stage uh, reciprocating compressor or the uh, piston compressor. Okay, so you can see, uh, any they actually the compressor uh, parts. Lah. We have a uh, so various compressor, it has a various part. So benda ni you boleh tengok dekat kedai motor. Kedai motor or kedai bicycle ke or kedai kereta ke. Uh, so when you start to pump the air in, into the, your tire, this thing will start to uh, make noise. Uh, they can start lah, they can start. So you take the intake, you uh, take the environment air, compress and supply to your tire. Uh, so you will take on the question so we have uh, so many things lah dalam dalam ni comprises of so many things so you will take on so all these things kalau you tak tahu the function uh, google you will google or you can ask in the next uh, discussion okay so then so advantage of piston type compressor uh, so you will take on so available in wide range of capacity so when uh, it's used always, uh, we you always senang nak dapat spare part lah. Okay, so it it also can generate 250 bars. So depending on the multi-staging, multi-stage, so it can go up to 250 bar, which is very high for pneumatic. Okay, better mechanical balancing. Okay, uh, overall efficiency compared to other compressors. So piston type compressor, dia memang ada advantage lah. Sebab tu industri selalu gunakan piston type compressor compared to other type of compressor. Okay.
okay some of the disadvantage of uh, this this type of uh, compressor uh, first thing uh, since is uh, reciprocating and it's like a lot of movement they can uh, generate initial force we, uh, that will shake the machine uh, so color shake the machine one thing they uh, can uh, make noise it will make noise uh, so uh, the second thing uh, the thing will move that is to place another place because of the vibration so you need to have a frame uh, at the point you drill the lantai so that the thing will not move at the point you can let some absorber ke, uh, to absorb the vibration uh, so meaning extra cost lah. okay so one thing extra setup another thing is extra cost uh, then uh, it can also deliver pulsating flow pulsating flow meaning uh, kejap dia uh, dia okay angin dia kuat kejap dia angin maybe drop can drop uh, so that's how uh, pulsate uh, macam nadi kita lah so dia ada pulse kan uh, similar the air flow also will uh, can have pulse because when it compress maybe uh, pulse akan turun uh, kemudian dia akan air balik uh, so if your application cannot deal with pulsating flow uh, you can add a certain mechanism to control okay and uh, proper side uh, damping chamber lah uh, damping chamber ataupun you gunakan receiver tank untuk store macam tung gas okay so from receiver tank to the application normally will be smooth so the, these are some of the disadvantage of piston type yes. uh, and kita ada diaphragm type yang ni dia gunakan hydraulic so hydraulic so diaphragm macam uh, diaphragm uh, di bawah paru-paru kan uh, so when uh, it moves down so air will enter when it moves up air will uh, be compressed and sent out dia uh, konsep dia sama lah Yes, yeah, so you will be uh, So important here. Yeah. Uh, then you have a rotary compressor. Uh, yeah, ni ada lah screw type. Uh, screw type meaning it look like a screw lah. Uh, so boleh tengok dekat sini intermeshing screws. Yeah, so air enters. So dekat tepi ni semua ada yang warna biru. It's actually uh, some space for the air to occupy. So when this this thing move, so air can lalu lah kawasan ni yang warna putih ni. Okay, so it will start to generate some compression. This idea is a new mechanism lah. So kalau you tengok dekat sini, warna hijau, so air will enter, so it will move through the uh, space available. So dia boleh deliver a continuous supply with no pulsation ataupun pressure fluctuation. Uh, yani kalau your application requires no pulsation uh, cannot deal with no uh, pulsation uh, you will consider juga rotary type so rotary type is not linear lah dia akan berpusing okay, so advantage less moving part compared to piston type compressor so this advantage need lubricant oil to reduce friction between the screws uh, sebab dia ada dua screw uh, so the, you can add some mechanism lah uh, to reduce friction uh, like like oil ke uh, so these are some of the advantage so all these things uh, we are studying so that you will consider okay when you become an engineer okay, so if your company is asking you to come up with a solution uh, so you will boleh consider lah okay depends on your application hmm. macam saya kerja dulu dekat industri so similar so you need to come up with a solution uh, so first thing you solve the problem second thing uh, reduce your cost so memang kadang-kadang our solution will be solving the problem but the cost will be too high so company tana so you need to have for more options uh, in order you you can mix and match lah okay uh, in order to solve the problem at a, at a lesser cost. Okay, tadi adalah screw type. So, ini adalah vein type. So, vein maksudnya dia ada macam uh, some kind like a plate lah. 
in the in between. So dia akan move so boleh tengok dekat sini. We have oil juga uh, in order because it has some some space kan in between. So you need to have some oil to lubricate. Okay, so you the atmospheric air enters, the wind will move and it will start to compress based on the movement. So kalau you tengok the wind is smaller compared to the frame. So when it move, dia akan ada some mechanism lah to compress the air then the compressed air will go up. Okay, so boleh baca dekat sini. Nothing, nothing so important. Okay, so the space between them is reduced. The reduction in volume compresses the air. Uh, so to the volume is reduced, so compression will happen. Okay, so that's on the compressor A tadi, yeah, air compressor. So tadi ada lima bagian kan? Okay, so B is air receiver tank. So air receiver tank is optional. Uh, so kalau you tak nak gunakan macam tung gas, you nak dapatkan terus dari supply gas dari supply pun boleh. But it's very risky. So risky. So we always encourage to use a air receiver tank. Uh, so air receiver tank, uh, it uh, provide a constant air pressure. A constant air pressure, and it can also act as a emergency supply. Emergency supply. Okay. Uh, tapi one one thing, it depends on the size of our application. Uh, so you can think of delivery volume. Uh, kalau application you on production line, tapi you nak gunakan satu tank yang kecil, cukup lah. Uh, on lima minit, uh, compressor finish, production stop. Uh, so it's not good. Uh, so you can add a, must be large enough to suit the low rate. Uh, so practically, it must be very big lah. Kalau your production is big, production line is big. Uh, so, you can think on network size, on uh, the type of compressor that you're using your compressed air, and kadang-kadang uh, akan ada pressure drop. So, kalau pressure drop, uh, so you will need to check lah whether it will affect your production line ke tak. Okay? So, selalunya kita akan gunakan air receiver tank as a emergency supply. Macam dekat untuk untuk electrical pun macam macam tu kan? So electric memang we connect straight to your power station. Your house is connected to power station. Tapi setengah tempat kalau ada power cut, dia akan ada generator untuk generate. Uh, similar lah. Um, so selalunya dekat dekat industri, uh, dia akan terus sambung dekat main supply. Tapi suddenly ada some uh, some disruption, dia akan gunakan emergency supply dari return. While waiting for the main supply to be corrected. Okay. So, boleh tengok air receiver tank. So, dia ada banyak bagian lah. Okay. So, it has an inlet. Uh, so, manual for you to check. Uh, kalau you nak buat maintenance. Kemudian ada storage tank. Uh, storage tank depends lah. Berapa besar. Lagi besar. So, it can cater uh, more application. Okay. So, ada safety relief valve. Yang ni kalau pressure terlalu tinggi. Dia akan relief. Kemudian you ada pressure gauge to check the pressure. Ada thermometer. Okay. Then you have a shut off valve. Uh, so kalau you nak keluarkan air. Uh, your compressed air. Yang ni dia boleh control lah. Okay. Then you ada water drain. Kalau uh, ada, ada condensation or wet. Uh, so air, the water will be drained out. Yang ni some of the important parts in your air receiver tank. Okay, so this thing is very important, this slide. Uh, main function of air receiver tank. Ada empat function. First adalah as a storage of a compressor. Uh, so compressor tak perlu run continuously. Uh, so you boleh ada lah. So uh, you either can make the air receiver tank bigger uh, to cater more ataupun you tambah jumlah. Uh, so you, kalau your production requires one hour punya supply and you cannot find a bigger air receiver tank uh, you tambah lah a uh, few you connect 
okay so after my first tank uh, fill second tank the uh, tank fourth tank uh, so boleh juga okay. so the second function is pulsating damping to smooth the uh, pulsing flow uh, dia ada damping damping maksudnya pengurangan so dia kurangkan impact uh, pulsation reducing uh, so dia ada mekanisme uh, untuk jadikan your your apply having a very smooth flow sebab so, kadang-kadang the application cannot take the pulsation dia akan rosak uh, so it, it's not good lah uh, so we we try to prevent so air receiver tank can help you to smoothen your pulse uh, pulsing flow so that's the second thing uh, so it exchange to assist air cooling and thus produce on uh, condensate drop out before the air enters the distribution system so distribution system is actually your your application lah your production line ke apa kan uh, so dia ada satu mechanism untuk it exchange uh, dia akan uh, uh, it will allow condensation to happen so macam dekat sini so condensation happen then water will be drained out first uh, baru supply dekat your system so your system takkan ada macam berkarat ke apa because if your compressed air have uh, air, uh, water droplet inside uh, so dia akan maybe kalau ada besi ke apa akan berkarat so we want to reduce that okay so that's the third function and fourth function collection and drop out point for dirt and condensate accumulating in the air after compress yang ni uh, kalau ada dirt lah uh, sebab gas kan so it's collecting the gas from the environment uh, before it compress so it can have a dirt okay so dirt uh, dia akan melalui filter uh, so filter is one, one another part lah uh, dia akan filter dulu okay so kalau dalam air receiver tank ada another filter pun bagus uh, so it filter dulu before send to a bigger filter so that's the function of uh, four main function of air receiver tank Okay, so yang ni pun favorite question juga. Okay, then you boleh tengok ada few lagi. Receiver are usually fitted with automatic condensate drain. Uh, yang ni untuk for you to check lah, maintenance. Okay, so air receiver must be fitted with safety air relief valve. Uh, yang ni untuk kurangkan uh, pressure, air pressure inside your tank. Uh, dia akan automatically keluarkan Air pressure. Okay, so that's the second thing. The third thing is air dryer. The air dryer, I think you know lah. Now from the name pun, you tahu function dia. Okay, to reduce moist moisture content. So macam saya bagi tahu tadi dalam the compressed air, so it can have moisture ataupun water vapor. So air dryer is used to reduce reduce the moist content and to suit the application. Kadang-kadang your application cannot have water vapor, so your compressor must must go through air dryer. Okay, air dryers. So air dryers are the three genes. So low temperature drying or coolant drying. So adsorption drying and absorption. So benda tak sama eh. Walaupun nama dia lebih kurang macam sama. Yang ni AD, yang ni AB. So, dia ada difference. Okay, yeah, we will see. What's the difference? So, kita tengok dulu low temperature drying. So, low temperature drying is normally macam gunakan fan lah. Ataupun heat exchanger. So, kalau kita uh, low temperature drying will be the cheapest lah among the three sebab yang ni either gunakan fan tapi fan is not so effective lah dia selalunya sistem dia akan gunakan heat exchanger ok so heat exchanger so I think dalam thermal fluid you already belajar how the heat exchanger works so we have a few mechanism so the heat exchanger will exchange the heat so if uh, there, there is a higher temperature or 
what do we put? So it will uh, use the heat exchanger me mechanism to uh, remove. So you have the two uh, term. So the aim is to reduce the temperature of the air to a dew point. Okay, so it's more on the temperature side, lah. Okay, we more uh, not on the drying. So drying, uh, yeah, low temperature drying is more on reducing the temperature. Among which intercooler that is. Okay, so the aim is to reduce the temperature of the air to a dew point. The dew point is linear two degrees to five degrees. So two degrees to five degrees. Uh, ensure the water in the air condenses. Uh, so automatically, as a result of temperature drop, condensation and uh, the water drop uh, will be uh, taken up from the system. Uh, from the compressor. So that's another thing. The dew point is the temperature at which airborne water vapors will condense. Uh, the dew point. So condensation will happen to form liquid dew. That is the same. Okay. So that's the first type. So the thing about the question is, so what air enters, uh, you have the heat exchanger the question is, so you have a, a heat exchanging element, so it can be a coolant or wet. So what could you allow you to? So automatically, uh, the condensation it will uh, reduce the temperature. The Lalu de Cassini, because of the gravity, the water will be collected. And the lumps are separated. Okay, then uh, you have the further cooling. And the Cassini phone, and then every time it uh, passes by the cooling at the phone heat exchanger, it will have a separator to collect the water. Then only it will go back to your system. So this we call as low temperature drying. So this is adsorption. So what is the uh, difference between adsorption dryer and absorption dryer? Uh, so this is another favorite question. So absorption method means that the water from the air will stick to the surface of the chemical. Uh, so you slowly think of okay, yani silica gel. So silica gel, uh, you slowly Anyone? In the shoes. Ah, shoe, uh, shoe again. The dalam, the other the machine, satu packet, packet of uh, some, bukan gula gula. Ah, this lalu kita dalam kotak kasut, ah, to avoid moisture. Ah, so silica gel ni, so what it will do? It will decrease the local humidity. Ah, ataupun uh, you ada activator alumina, so another chemical lah. So what it will do, the absorption method means that the water from the air will stick to the surface of the chemical. Uh, so adsorption, dear uh, Chuma, the material I can add to So when the air passes through the material, so the moisture I can stick to the surface of the chemical. So meaning, Nothing will happen, so just the heavy water vapor can stick to the chemical. Okay. So that is uh, adsorption. Okay, so you will watch it. Okay, so when the, the water vapor stick to the chemical, so it will automatically dry the about young bread to the stick can and ring and to the can. So what do you think of the adsorption? So the moist air is entering. Okay, so shut off. Kalau open dalam pneumatic, meaning there's a connection. Eh? Open. Kalau close, meaning close. Okay, so any open, so the air will pass through here. We have uh, adsorber. Uh, either silica gel ataupun activated alumina. Then uh, it will go through shut off all before. So adsorption meaning it will just stick to the surface of the chemical. Then kita the absorption. So absorption, any pun digunakan chemical. Tapi mechanical. Tadi dia just stick to the surface. Yang ni dia tarik terus. Okay, dia tarik terus. So 
where the chemical absorb water from the air. Uh, so, so ab after absorbing this chemical water uh, will become liquid. Uh, so, dia mula-mula dia ada macam solid. So, once it uh, absorb the water, yang solid chemical tu akan jadi macam water. Then it will go out. So, absorption, dia bukan stick to the surface, dia akan serap. Macam, macam your, your, apa? Sponge. Sponge, dia absorb water kan? Sama. So, when it absorb, dia akan mengecil. Mengecil dan dia, the chemical akan jadi water. So, once the water vapor enters to it. So, some of the advantage, simple install, installation of equipment. So, no mechanical wear because there is no moving part in the dryer. No extra energy. Okay, some of the advantage. So, okay, you will let you know the question. So, moist air is entering. Okay, so you are the uh, some of the chemical lah. So chemical. So what is happen? So the moist water will enter. So selepas dia masuk dekat sini, so all this chemical dia akan jadi water, then dia akan turun ke bawah. And then condensation drain dia akan keluarkan lah. Okay. So then the dry air dia akan berjaya lalu ke atas. So that is an absorption. Okay, so absorption, uh, ada chemical and water vapor just stick to the surface. Dia takkan cair. Absorption, uh, you ada, ada chemical uh, and when kena water vapor, chemical tu akan cair then akan turun based on the gravity. Dia akan collect dekat sini dan kita boleh keluarkan. So that's the two types of drying method. Okay, so I'll uh, just go a bit fast. Okay, so air service equipment. So, kita pergi ke D. So, kita dah tengok tiga. So, D is, uh, so this is considered as the final stage of compressed air. So, we see. So, we see of all conditioning. So, yeah, do I need, meaning you're preparing the air. So, you're preparing the air. Before. So, waktu you tengok, kita ada compressor. So, it's actually preparing the air. Air receiver tank is actually preparing the air. And you have the dryer, actually preparing the air also. And service unit. Nah, dalam ni, dia ada tiga. FRL. FRL. Filter, regulator and lubricator. Okay. So, dia selalunya akan ada lah tiga-tiga ni. Okay. So, yang ni also, uh, pun untuk prepare the air. Okay, so, ataupun kita panggil as servicing or conditioning. So, kalau you tengok perkataan ni, servicing, conditioning, preparing uh, the compressed air, so mini, dan tu adalah dalam yang kota tadi. Dia kan kota tadi. Okay, so kota merah ni. So, this is what we call as air supply and conditioning element. Okay, so we already see three. Okay, we enter two, filter, regulator, and lubricator. Okay, so three aims of air service unit. Okay, so to provide air consuming equipment, right? compress air of suitable cleanliness. Okay, so air service equipment, ataupun FRL, function dia is to create a suitable cleanliness in your system. Because if not clean, so, your system will not last long. So, better for you to invest in cleaning. Uh, then you use, instead of uh, one, two years, you need to replace a new unit. So, maybe you can use five, six years. So, uh, your maintenance will be reduced. Okay, should also provide pressure, stabilized air. Uh, pulsation lah tadi. Okay, so you want to reduce the pulsation. Uh, so, you want to reduce whatever related lah. Uh, it provides an air supply flow which carries lubricating oil to so correct adjusted quantity. So, lubricate valves, actuators. So, uh, when you have some moving part, 
especially you activated like the last pipe, the system. So you have like a piston or you have like a motor. So normally when you have movement, you left wear and tear. Nadi akan jadi aus. So uh, kurangkan uh, to reduce the friction. So you need to provide a suitable. Uh, any you need to identify. You need to gariskan yang ni lah. Correct adjusted quantity. So not too much and not too less. It must be in the suitable range. Uh, so you can pro provide a lubricating oil. You introduce it dalam your compressed air. So when the compressed air moves from point A to point B, so it will bring along the small amount of oil to lubricate your actuator or valve. So this is a function of air lubrication, uh, air, sorry, air service equipment. So we can go to this one, there are three. So this is filter. So nanti next week, next week kita akan ada lab. Uh, but next week lab class lah. Uh, but we will have around eight weeks of lab. Satu minggu, dua jam. Okay, kita bagi kepada tiga group. So you will study the software as well as you see all these things in the physical. Ada kan lab. Ada filter, uh, compressor pun ada. Okay, so you have the filter, regulator and lubricator. So tiga-tiga uh, ni dia lebih kurang lah. Dia nampak macam ni lah. So it has its own function. You boleh baca dekat sini. What filter does or the clean. Then uh, regulator so to regulate the pressure. Lubricator to lubricate. Hmm. Uh, ni adalah simbol lah. So nanti you akan biasa dengan simbol ni. When you start to use your fluid stream next week onwards. Uh, so I always encourage before the lab you try to uh, explore lah. So, so yang tu dia just pick and drop je uh, in order to create so try to create yang ni with lubricator yang ni actually ada satu line lah dekat sini symbol dia sama cuma ada satu line so, kalau ada line so it means it's with lubricator and without lubricator so, so boleh baca so uh, just uh, ringkaskan yang ni lah so compressed air filter is actually to filter out large particles of dirt. Okay, proper liquid particles lah. So it will be collected at lower part of the filter bowl, then you will be warm. So the main function is to remove all contaminants. So the air will enter. So you have a filtration element. So one, uh, only a suitable particle size boleh masuk dekat sini. Then it will go to your output. It's macam yeah, the normal filter. The normal filter. It has a filter paper inside or filter material. So that's the first thing. The second thing is regulator. So when the pressure is too low, it result in poor efficiency. And when the pressure is too high, energy is wasted. So air pressure regulation, yeah, tapu regulator. Uh, you want to ensure that the pressure is suitable. So not too high, not too low. So it's essential to regulate the pressure to match the requirement of the load. So it depends on your application. Uh, kalau temporary, uh, your your application requires higher pressure so you can allow so your energy will not be wasted so if your application requires low then you need to adjust it okay. so normally air pressure regulation you can fit the air receiver tank or at your circuit your product in here this will be better Okay, so your power section, you can create up to 6 bar. Your control section, 4 bar. You want to make sure you have enough. Uh, and air pressure regulation, normally at the load circuit, you can reduce. So let's say your sub main supply is 
six bar. Tapi your valve only want to use four bar, so you have your air pressure regulator there before you enter to your valve. So they can control lah the pressure. Yes, we have. So normally, kita akan gunakan venting ataupun the diaphragm type of pressure regulator. This is just the symbol. If you want to know what is the relieving or venting type, you watch it at the end. So it control the cross section of valve seat. The pressure in the last surface area exposed to secondary pressure. Ah, this sama macam tadi lah. Dia ada satu kan yang diaphragm type of compressor. The the pressure and the function is almost the same. Dia ada dua bagian. So you can see ya. So if the pressure is too low. Uh, so it will it will collect more. So it will collect more more pressure from the supply unit. Uh, so in order to increase the pressure. So if the pressure is too high, uh, so they can kurangkan lah. How the air pressure regulator works. Okay, so the last part, compressed air regulator, so lubricator. So you know, uh, you want to check and control the amount of oil passing through it. Uh, you now introduce uh, some of the oil. Uh, you the oil because ni, so ni ah, you will know because ni dia macam ada small droplet. You introduce lubricators, tap on oil to your system. So you cannot supply too much oil. Nanti dia akan susah juga. It won't be too efficient. So you need to know. So the main function is to reduce friction and corrosion in the air valve, linear actuators, and and ni adalah simbol dia. So the indicators are necessary in certain cases. The rapid uh, oscillating motions, even uh, more other banyak movement, so you need to put lubrication. Uh, with cylinder of large diameter, lubricator should, where possible, be installed only directly upstream through the engineering cylinder. So the thing about the so the, it's introducing, introducing the small droplet. Uh, so you you let at the upstream lah, okay, at the supply starting place. So it, okay. okay, so you can see a uh, industrial compressor air system. So this is the final slide. You will be not very special. Compressor ada dekat sini. So you start the motor, you start the compressor. So air is entering inside. So water discharge. So air enters, compress, descend to the particular. Then you have the filter and you need more like your tank lah, retriever tank. So then you have the dryer. And then you add a filter to get any, and it can be distributed to your open line. You need painting the, so pneumatically paint, a painting device pun ada. Yeah, maybe the temperature is low. There are other applications. So industry memang ada pneumatic. There's so many industries lah. So I think that's all uh, I explain on the note. This is why I open, maybe we can do the lamp 10 minutes. So you can ask question. Okay, whatever you like, you want to know.
you want me to explain maybe the last 10 minutes i open for discussion i hope you will ask question lah why i won't repeat this thing again you need to watch the video to understand any question uh, sir can i ask one question yeah, yeah. how does the rotary form pressure work again yes uh, i can't hear you oh, how does the rotary compressor work so rotary compressor yeah. okay, so you have uh, two types uh, so this is the compressor you have a positive displacement so you have a linear type and also rotary type so uh, we have like a screw and vein so rotary compressor so it has a screw type and also vein type okay. so it's actually utilizing the space in between the screws okay so you need to understand that uh, air is compressed when the volume is big, when the volume is big, the pressure will be low. But when you uh, make the volume smaller, the pressure will increase. Because uh, the air molecules will start to push towards the wall. And it won't have a lot of space for you to move. So similarly, uh, I think the piston type uh, is very... Uh, clear because uh, once the thing enters here and your piston move it will make the volume small okay, but for rotary uh, rotary compressor uh, it will the air will enters and when the screws are moving so uh, it will have uh, increase and it will have a reduce in volume because the air will not be allowed to enter after some time. Right, because it's moving at fast phase, so the air cannot enter, so the volume will be uh, smaller. Uh, then the pressure will be uh, compressed. Uh, the, the, the air will be compressed and the pressure will be increased. Oh, it's, uh, uh, it's the intermeshing screws are like moving opposite each other? Yes, yes. You suppose. Because, uh, because you know like a gear. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, you need to work in the opposite. One thing will drive another thing. So, similarly. But maybe uh, you can have uh, so many setup. La. The one that we are discussing here, so the intermeshing screw will move in the opposite direction. So maybe you uh, you have uh, other type of rotary compressor outside there in the market, which move in the same direction, uh, but it can compress. So it depends. So uh, it's not only whatever we are discussing here lah. Uh, so it's actually there are a lot of mechanism because all these uh, devices are created by the uh, industrialists so the manufacturers so manufacturers they can have their own mechanism so we can I ask uh, another question yes yes i want to ask about the adsorption dry the dryer diagram yeah Adsorption. Uh, adsorption AD. Is it this? Uh, yeah, this one. Uh, uh, we talked about adsorber number one, but what about adsorber number two? Okay, adsorber number two will not work because your shutoff valve is closed. Closed meaning to top. Uh, so the air will, will cannot uh, enter here. So you cannot go to adsorption two. So if you want to use like both adsorber, you need to open the shut off valve must be open then it will go to both sides but how does the adsorber number two work with the heater and a fan the heater yeah uh so maybe if it, it requires uh for 
Okay, so the the moist is entering here, and it will go to this side. And you can have uh, supply from the other side as well. So it depends. So maybe this is just a, a few entry points, lah. A few entry points. So you have a pan here to to dry it before it enters to the absorber, because normally you won't rely only in one one mechanism. So uh, in the industry, you can have all three. So low temperature drying, you can have absorption and absorption in one same system. So you can utilize uh, depends. Uh, because sometimes your supply uh, will only require low temperature dry. You don't need to use. Because when you are using chemicals, so you need to come up with the extra cost, right? So at times you want to avoid that, you just use uh, normal temperature dry. Uh, so the company will normally once they want to set up, they will set up uh, with all the options. So they won't like expand after some time. At least for certain years lah. So maybe a uh, year, I took it from the internet. Uh, so maybe it has two absorber. Uh, so one with heater lah. Heater to increase or, or fan to decrease. So depend. So later you can design your own circuit. So similar like this. So maybe one side you want to put with fan, uh, can. As long as it fits the purpose line and uh, do the function that is efficient. So can I ask one last question? Uh, more, more about safety question, I guess. Safety, okay. So we were talking about how these machines can handle bars of pressure and everything, like 600 kilopascal, 400 kilopascal. How much pressure can a human body handle before getting seriously injured by, by I guess, air? Now it depends on your atmospheric pressure, actually. I think uh, last semester we learned, right? Because uh, uh, on top of the eel, the atmospheric pressure will be lower because far from the gravity. Uh, so it depends on, because if you work underground, uh, maybe the you need more safety gears in, to withstand a normal pressure itself. Uh, so uh, I always is is all depends on your application uh, where you want to apply the thing. Uh, so if you can control your atmospheric pressure, maybe inside the room or what, maybe the safety gear you don't need to have. You, because you can regulate the atmospheric pressure, right? Uh, so, it, it depends on the application, actually. Okay, so I understand. Is there any other questions? We have around one, two minutes before we end. No, sir. So, no last question. I hope you all understand lah. So if you want more explanation on this, I think I have given a video for you to listen. So please go and listen. So please try to listen to all the videos that I give because I only give the videos with permission. And uh, you can be tested in your test and also final exam based on the videos. So, uh, I always encourage the students to uh, listen to the video before coming to the discussion so that uh, in discussion we can learn more. Okay, so I think that's all from me. So if no final question, uh, we will meet tomorrow. So tomorrow will be face to face lecture. Okay, so I already tested the unit. Okay, I think uh, last week we had some issues. But uh, we already managed to solve. So tomorrow we will have a uh, face-to-face class, the eight o'clock to ten o'clock. I think after that also you have class there okay, with one Rathod. So please come uh, early as possible. 
Nah, next to all di quick read. So, uh, quick attendance, then we will start the class. So, we will enter chapter 2 tomorrow. Now, since we already covered chapter 1 in the last week lecture and also the discussion. Okay, so this video I will upload today in my YouTube channel and I will give you the link. Uh, so tomorrow uh, we will meet in DK3 with a face-to-face -face lecture. Okay, so thank you so much. We will meet tomorrow.